Welcome to Landfair Live, the flagship summer lecture series presented and sponsored by the Watchill Conservancy. Thank you for joining us. Following recommended social distancing guidelines, we're offering the 2020 lecture series in the virtual space via Zoom. A few of us are present tonight, keeping social distance in our makeshift studio here in the gorgeous Chapel of Me Barnes reading room in the Landfair livery in the heart of Watchill. Tonight is the third presentation in our 2020 lineup. I heard a version of Dr. Clarkson's, Clarkson's talk, excuse me, Charles, at the Rhode Island Natural History Survey's annual meeting this winter. I'm thrilled he's with us tonight. You're in for a real treat. I wanna remind you that all of our Landfair Live talks this year have been recorded and are available to view at your convenience. You can find them on the Conservancy website just go to the events tab, find Landfear Live, click into that and look for 2020 presentations. Each video is about an hour long. Please share this with your friends. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Peter Payton. Peter is a distinguished professor of ornithology at the University of Rhode Island. He's Rhode Island's expert on all aspects of bird ecology. Lucky for us, shorebirds are a specialty of his. Peter served on the Napa Tree Science Advisors for eight years. His counsel on managing Napa Tree to protect our amazing bird life are invaluable to us. Thank you, Peter, for all of your help. Uh, and thank you for joining us this evening to introduce your colleague, Dr. Charles Clarkson. Take it away, Peter. Peter's with us virtually tonight. Well, thank, thank you very much and welcome everybody. It's, it's a great crowd and I'm really excited to introduce uh, Dr. Charles Clarkson. We've worked together since 2015. Um, so just a brief introduction to Charles. His background is he's, uh, he received his PhD from the Uni University of Virginia in 2012. He studied effects of mercury on water birds um, for his dissertation research. Prior to that, he received his master's degree from Virginia Commonwealth um, in 2005, where he studied prothonotary warblers, and he received his bachelor's from Mary Washington College in um, Virginia also. Uh, so I wanna, Charles has worked on the Breeding Bird Atlas with me and, and led the project since 2015. Um, in addition to that work, uh, those of you who have a travel bug and ever want to go to Panama with an expert birder, um, Charles has a company, Ant Bird Tours. He started in 2014, and he does an amazing job teaching about the avifauna of Panama. So if you ever want to have a great trip to Panama, he's a person to talk to. Um, he's also a very experienced bird bander. Uh, Prior to some of this other work, she worked on a marine base of, um, studying red cockaded woodpeckers. And he's also taught at Salve Regina and Roger Williams University. Um, and in addition to that, the connection to the sea, he also taught the semester to sea on a, uh, on a boat from 2010 to 2014. So he's a great background in ornithology. So it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Charles Clarkson. Thank you, Peter. Before we get to Charles, uh, I wanted to dedicate tonight's presentation to an important member of our community who passed away in 2008, Grant G. Simmons Jr., the father of our own Grant Simmons. Mr. Simmons Sr. was a lifelong bird enthusiast. He was a passionate bird watcher and a member of the American Ornithologists Union. He was also a life member of the National Audubon Society, which he served as a director from 1968 to 1974. Grant Simmons Jr. had an insatiable curiosity about all aspects of avian ecology. He would have loved tonight's lecture by Dr. Clarkson. So for everybody uh, in our audience tonight, um, in a minute, I want you to, to join all of us here in um, Landfear Live Technical Central Studio to give Charles a big round of applause. But I have a couple of uh, short announcements to make. And one of them has to do with that very kind and beautiful dedication that Deborah Lamb gave for tonight's talk uh, to, to Grant G. Simmons Jr. He would have been 
all over this. I and remember. he would have been peppering the chat screen with a million questions. I have a, a, a personal reflection on, on uh, senior Mr. Simmons. Um, my first real trip to Watch Hill was in about 2005, and I had to give a presentation to the Nature Conservancy um, on coastal conservation. And it was an evening reception at Dane Nichols' house. Some of you might know Dane Nichols. And um, uh, after my talk, uh, I invited people, if they had questions, to, to come up to me. And a very dashing man with a pink shirt and a blue suit top uh, came walking up. And that was Grant Simmons III, the Grant that we know. And he had his father uh, in escort, who was at the time quite elderly. And Grant introduced his father to me. And then I felt like I was undergoing my PhD comprehensive exam one more time. Dr. August, please tell me what you think about the declines of the Magnolia Warbler in the Mid-Atlantic right now. I mean, I was clueless from the get-go. Clearly, um, Grant Simmons Jr. was an was a over-the-edge bird fanatic, very articulate, very knowledgeable. And so it was just wonderful that Deborah could um, uh, dedicate your talk tonight to uh, Grant G. Simmons' work.